Welcome to U Central News. I'm Mariana Malik. And I'm Devin Bass. President Donald Trump revealed that his administration would soon announce its response to aerial strikes on oil facilities in Saudi Arabia. According to the president, the ultimate option means war. His comments came soon after U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the weekend strike was an act of war. Pompeo claims that Iran is the culprit of putting the global energy supply at risk. The Saudi energy minister announced Tuesday that Saudi oil production would be fully restored by the end of this month. This diffuses concerns about major oil supply disruption after Brent crude oil jumped nearly 20% on Monday. New information today on a story that has been developing in Oklahoma over the past few days. Officials from the Oklahoma Department of Corrections said that they found weapons, drugs, and cell phones after a series of apparently coordinated fights at six state prisons. Director of the Oklahoma Corrections Professionals, Bobby Cleveland, believes the fights had to be a coordinated effort and that inmates could have used the contraband cell phones to coordinate the attacks statewide. The six fights left one inmate dead and a dozen other inmates and prison staff injured. All 24 states and three private prisons will remain on lockdown indefinitely. We will keep you updated as the story continues to develop. National Voter Registration Day is coming up next Tuesday. With the upcoming 2020 election, we're seeing more and more political outreach toward young voters. According to the 2016 U.S. Census, voter turnout among citizens over 65 was at about 70 percent. Meanwhile, young voters turned out at only about 45 percent. UCO students have a lot of views on this political engagement. Although the primaries aren't until March, some voters seem to have already made up their minds, while others are still waiting for more information on candidates and policies. You can download the form to register to vote in Oklahoma at the State Election Board website. Flavored e-cigarettes took another hit today as Michigan joins New York in banning the flavored product. Michigan announced its ban just one day after New York. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services says the ban is effective immediately. This gives retailers and online sellers two weeks to stop selling menthol and mint-flavored e-cigarettes. If the sellers fail to stop shelving e-cigarette products, they will be imprisoned for six months, fined $200 or both. For the Spanish-speaking students who like to grab a copy of the New York Times, you may notice a difference in today's issue. The Times has decided to put an end to their Spanish language section. This was an experimental section started by in an effort to connect to more readers. And a nonprofit organization in the Metro is giving struggling Oklahomans a second chance. U Central reporter John Hayes is in Oklahoma City with the story. This program is showing just how one helping hand can make a tiny or big difference. We're able to provide them that hope and opportunity that they didn't have before. Melanie Anthony is one of many staff members you'll find here at Pivot an organization dedicated to helping youth in the metro who have instability in their lives. All you have to do to get help is call or visit their office. So if a young person comes to us and they're hungry and they don't have a consistent place to sleep tonight and they're behind on their school credits, we can help them through that. Pivot offers a variety of resources Oklahomans can take advantage of, like a food pantry, counseling services, and even a wardrobe closet. We might have a young man who just secured a job, but he has to have black, no slip shoes tomorrow, and we don't have those in a size in our clothing closet, so we'll go out and purchase those. When it comes to education, Anthony says Pivot has a wide variety of programs to help those who have fallen behind, but that there are external factors that also play a big part. If you're a person who is tired and hungry and hasn't had a safe place to sleep, if we don't provide those wraparound services, the child is not going to be successful in the classroom. In addition to those resources, Pivot is also working on a community of tiny homes. Each one is about 280 feet and includes a bathroom, kitchen, and living area. You can tell a young person, hey, you need to get a job and maintain this job. Hey, you need to be studying. You need to really focus on your schoolwork. But if they don't have a safe place to lay their heads at night, you, the housing is housing is crucial. Pivot plans to finish the tiny houses in the next few weeks. Their goal is to have over 80. To learn more about Pivot or to donate, you can visit www.pivotok.org. For now, reporting in Oklahoma City, John Hayes, U Central News. Thanks, John. And our very own MassCom professor. 
And Pulitzer Prize winner Joe Haidt will be having a signing tomorrow for his debut book, Unnecessary Sorrow. The signing is at 6 p.m. at the Best of Books bookstore owned by Professor Haidt and his family. Devin had the pleasure of sitting down with him earlier today. Uh, so, Professor Haidt, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so, with your book signing tomorrow, go ahead and just tell us a little bit about how it's going to be with this being your debut book. Well, this is a nonfiction book that I wrote about uh, my older brother, Paul Haidt, who was a Roman Catholic priest who suffered from paranoid schizophrenia. Uh, he ended up being laicized or defrocked by the Catholic Church because of his mental illness. and and over a period of time ended up as a transportation worker and uh, eventually he was shot and killed on his front doorstep uh, in Oklahoma City, his apartment. And so the book is about his life as well as his death. I spent, oh, approximately uh, 10 years in the research of wow. this book and collecting thousands of documents about Paul and about what happened to him in relationship to the Catholic Church. Uh, when he was in mental institutions, as well as what happened to him uh, finally with uh, law enforcement. Um, and one of the last things I was able to obtain is a 150-page police report from the Oklahoma City Police Department on what happened the night of his death in December of 2000. Wow, okay, and so obviously it's very close to you, so with it being your brother, how did that affect your journey in doing all this research and writing the book? Well, initially I felt a lot of remorse. It took me a few years before I decided to do the book, and I decided based on, Paul was the type of person who gave away everything he had. He would give away his money, he would give away his guitar, he would give away any Bible, anything that he had he would give away, but he kept three things, his writings, he kept his clippings and he kept his photos. So uh, I was going through his writing one day, and it's been more than a decade ago, and I found a, a quote from him that said, I missed my true vocation, which was to help people. And I thought, you know what? Perhaps this is what I need to do is fulfill his vocation, is to help people. And perhaps this book is the way to do it. And so the book became a journey in its own right about my own going through whether I should write it or not, whether I should stop doing it, um, whether I felt guilt about what happened to my brother. And eventually, however, I decided that it was a book that would help people. And that's why I completed the journey of writing. And it tells a story from when Paul was very young in 1942 uh, in the days during World War II to when he died in 2000. And that's how, what the book takes it through. But it also talks about the systems that affected him, the Catholic Church, the mental health system, and also the judicial and law enforcement, and what eventually caused his life to take turns and what eventually caused his death. Okay, and I know that you're a Pulitzer Prize winner. So with that, how is it different, the excitement for this from the Pulitzer Prize. Well, it, it, the, the Pulitzer Prize was connected to my time of being editor of the Gazette in Colorado Springs. And right. it was a project called uh, Other Than Honorable that was headed by Dave Phillips, who's now uh, a reporter at the New York Times. And I was the editor uh, over the project and the newspaper at the time. And it did win in 2014 the Pulitzer Prize for National Reporting. How does it compare is that this was much more of a leadership role in that particular project. This was much a, a personal involvement of right. my own right in investigating and looking into documentation as well as tying in the interactions that I had with my oldest brother. My oldest brother was nearly 16 years older than wow. me. I'm the youngest of seven children. So that was the type of differences that I was looking into in my own right rather than leading a project. And to me this is you know this is sad on one part but also it's a it's a part of me telling me that this is a book that can help people. It can help discussion on the stigma of mental illness that exists in society today. So that's that's why I eventually made the difference that it was an individual project rather Definitely. than a team project led by a great reporter. Okay. Awesome, very cool. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Professor Hyde. I appreciate it. Yeah. Jay, what do you have for us with weather? 
What's up, everybody? Hope today is a great day for you guys. Guess what? It's hump day. Hump day. I hope you guys are having an awesome Wednesday. Let's go ahead and kick off what's going on right now. Right now, it's 86 degrees. It's going to feel the winds coming from the southeast at 6 miles per hour. It's going to feel like 90. That heat index is still something that is going to affect us as we go on throughout our day. Now let's go ahead and look across the state right now. 83 in Guymon, 89 in Woodward, 87 in Enid, 86 in Oklahoma City. So in the western part, we're still feeling those high temperatures. In the eastern part of Oklahoma, 89 in McAllister, 89 in Tulsa. So we're still feeling um, those high temperatures. The heat index, even though the temperatures were a little bit lower than they were yesterday, the heat index is going to be around 93 to about 95. So even when you're walking around on campus we're still going to feel you know that 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 ickiness that hotness even when you're just walking around you still feel you start sweating just by walking outside your dorm now later on tonight we're going to drop back down um, significantly into 71 degrees and the winds are going to come from the southeast from three to six miles per hour it's going to feel like 68 so around nighttime we're still going to have a little bit more um, leeway as far as temperatures but you know Hopefully, as we go on and get closer into fall, then the temperatures won't be so hot. But later on, coming up, um, I'm going to give you a look across the temperatures across the state, as well as what we can expect tomorrow. Mariana, Devin, back to you guys. For our international students on campus looking for career help, there is currently an international career workshop in the Nye University Center. Our Youth Central reporter, Dylan Rouse, has more. Yesterday, an international career workshop was held in the Nye University Center's Heritage Room, hosted by UCO's Center of Global Affairs and Career Development Center. The workshop aimed to help international students learn about immigration and employment. A panel of UCO international student alumni were hosted at the event to answer any questions students may have about their time here at UCO. The overall goal of the two-day event is to educate international students about the current and future careers in America. And under this event, there are three other events. So the first one happened at 4 to 5 o'clock. That's an immigration and employment session that's done by the Office of Global Affairs Advisors, Jennifer and Jalal. So what they are doing is they went to, they told students what kind of documents they would need to work off campus for op optional training, optional practical training, and um, CPT, which is internships. At the Nye University Center, Dylan Rouse, U Central News. Right after the show at 5, the second day of the International Career Workshop starts. Today's focus is on resume building and mock interviews. The event is focused on international students, but all students are welcome to attend. The event will be on the third floor of the Nye University Center in the Heritage Room. And the 18th annual Miss Asian UCO Scholarship Pageant is coming up, and applications are now open to those who are interested in competing. Contestants will have to represent an Asian country and showcase their unique cultures and talents during the night. Those who place will receive tuition waiver scholarships. Applications are due Friday, October 5th at 5 p.m. For more information, you can contact the UCO Asian American Student Association at officialucoasa at gmail.com. And the French Club is kicking off the year with its first meeting today at 5.30. The meeting will be in the Liberal Arts Building's New South Wing in room 241. The workshops will include French games and food. If you don't speak French, don't worry because all students are welcome to attend. Are you interested in higher education? UCO announced today that it will be hosting the Edmond College Night at 6 p.m. October 1st. The event will take place in the third floor ballrooms of the Nye University Center where more than 80 colleges and universities will be in attendance. UCO says this free event is open to anyone interested in higher education. The UCO Speech Pathology Program is offering free hearing screenings for all UCO students, faculty, and staff. Screenings are held every Monday to Thursday in the Speech Pathology Clinic on the first floor of the Max Chambers Library. To book an appointment, please call 405-974-5705. Next, we have weather coming up. Stay with us.
Sometimes, the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, Such a weirdo. excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Well, what's up, guys? I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful day. It's going to be a beautiful night because the temperatures are all going to be in the lower 70s, 69 in Woodward, 73 in Clinton, 71 in Oklahoma City, in the eastern part of Oklahoma, Tulsa at 72, McAllister at 71. So the temperatures tonight are going to be pretty cool. They're going to be pretty chill. You're allowed to, you know, go out and, and, and really enjoy that nice weather, unlike, you know, today where it's blazing hot. And then tomorrow, tomorrow, will be at 86 degrees, so we're gonna jump back up and from the 70s at night to about 80s. But that heat index again, uh, winds from the southeast at nine, nine miles per hour. It's gonna feel like 90, the humidity is at 54%, so we don't really have to worry um, a lot about the humidity too much. But as we go in tomorrow across the state, we're all back up in the uh, lower 90s to high um, 80s, 86 in Lawton, 86 in Oklahoma City, 89 in McAllister, 92 up there in Tulsa. So tomorrow, the temperatures are going to climb back up. We're going to get more of that heat. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself um, as the heat continues to rise. We're not too far into um, the fall weather just yet. But later on, I'll give you a look at the seven-day forecast. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Jay. Later, we'll take a look at social media. The degree is now here at the University of Central Oklahoma. I am one of the first to explore it. It's called the Professional Science Masters, or PSM. The computational program helps math, science, and engineering students find their edge, combine graduate courses in a STEM field with MBA classes, gain skills that are cutting edge and relevant. The program is flexible and convenient with locations downtown Oklahoma City and Edmond. Connect to Central, advance your career with the Professional Science Masters. Ride on a wave or climb above trees. See something new in the land of no boundaries. In a state with the most diverse terrain, it's all fun and games. Plan it all at TravelOK.com. Come see for yourself where you've never gone. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made this vacation happen. Double points with every purchase. Cleverly merging promotions. I love it. Cross-referencing travel sites and booking all your flights with those... Vouchers. I got us bumped. They were like, oh, But now they're like... <laughs> Aloha. You aced this vacation. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. <laughs> Radio. Your son wants to get a cat, really take but you're allergic. Do you A, prepare yourself, B, make the best of it, C squared equals 25. Good job! Or C, find a loophole. <sighs> When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers, but that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back to You Central News. My name is Blade Pfeiffer, and welcome to your social media update. Number one trending on Twitter today is National Cheeseburger Day. Today is the day, and a lot of places are offering discounts and free burgers. Applebee's is offering its classic bacon cheeseburger with unlimited fries for a discounted price today. Jack in the Box is offering a free burger with any app purchase. And even Dairy Queen is celebrating with a $4 meal deal. Be sure to stop by your nearest burger restaurant to get these deals while they last. I know I sure will. I love me a discount. 
While you're eating your free cheeseburger, feel free to tune in to the highly anticipated season nine premiere of American Horror Story 1984 tonight on the FX channel. Starring Emma Roberts, Billy Lord, Cody Fern, and Gus Kenworthy, the show will highlight five friends who leave Los Angeles to work as counselors at Camp Redwood. FX has been careful to release only a few details about what's to come, but fans are ready to see the story unfold. What we do know is that Sarah Paulson and Evan Peters will not be returning for the ninth season. One fan said, Evan Peters and Sarah Paulson are in, 19, in AHS 1984, but still pumped for the season premiere tomorrow night. So, are you guys excited for this season of American Horror Story? Let us know in our comments on our Facebook page, at U Central News. And speaking of horror films, the UCO Student Programming Board will be hosting a free movie screening of IT Chapter 2 for all UCO students tonight at the Kicking Bird Cinema in Edmond. The first 50 UCO students to arrive at the theater get in for free. The showing will be at 6.05 p.m. And for more updates on them, follow them on social media at UCO SPB. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure to follow us on our social media so you don't miss out on any of our U Central updates. Have a great day, Broncos. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Blaine. After this, we'll, after this break, we'll have Logan with sports. Stick with us. change it all. I would. I would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back. And I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision... Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. In the land of wonder and awe, you won't believe you see what you saw. Where there's something to do for young and for old, where stories are written and then they're retold. Visit TravelOK.com today. Come see for yourself and come out to play. Hey there Bronco fans, I'm Logan Long and this is U Central Sports. We will start off with the UCO tennis team who put on a dominating performance over the weekend as they hosted the Bronco Invite. The Broncos went 26-3 over the weekend and in their three match losses UCO didn't lose a completed match to anyone not from UCO. The Broncos won a pair of all the UCO finals which accounted for two of their three losses. Six players finished the tournament with undefeated records and UCO also won both doubles draws. The Broncos will head to Wyoming next weekend for the Wyoming Invite. There's a big matchup in college football this weekend as the Oklahoma State Cowboys will travel to Austin to take on the number 12 ranked Texas Longhorns. The Cowboys are off to a 3-0 start and will have their first real challenge of the season against Texas. The Longhorns are 2-1 with their only loss of the season being a 45-38 loss at the hands of the number 4 ranked LSU Tigers. The Longhorns are in a must-win situation from now on if they hope to get back into college football playoff conversation. The Pokes will have a tough matchup in front of them as they try to beat a very good Texas team on the road. And we also have several UCO sports playing tonight here on campus. The UCO soccer team hosts East Central tonight at 7 p.m. at Tom Thompson Field. 
The Broncos are 16-0 all-time against East Central and have outscored the Tigers a combined 50-4 in those meetings. The UCO volleyball team hosts Southeastern at 7 p.m. tonight in the Hamilton Fieldhouse, so make sure you come out and support your Broncos sports teams. Finally, the UCO football team will be playing their first weekend game of the season on Saturday. The Broncos will host the Lincoln Blue Tigers at 7 p.m. on Saturday in Wantland Stadium. UCO will head into the game with a 1-1 one one record following their fourth quarter comeback win against Nebraska Kearney. Coach, what is it about the Broncos in the fourth quarter this season? Well, we've, you know, it shows character. You know, we haven't started well is, is the issue that I see. But proved to be a second half team as they have scored 21 points in the fourth quarter in each of their first two games. The Bronco offense is averaging 145 yards per fourth quarter and has five total touchdowns in the fourth quarters of the first two games. Well, that's all the time I have for sports today. Let's send it back to the desk. Guys, what do we have after the break? Thanks, Logan. Stick with us because we're going to have a last look at weather after the break. Don't go anywhere. Whomever you want to be, wherever you want to go, UCO's College of Business can help get you there. Our degree programs and dedicated faculty will help you gain the knowledge and skills you need to connect to the future of business. Because of UCO's College of Business, I've been able to be successful in business and in leadership. They take that time for situational things to prepare you and give you the tools, essential needs, and skill sets that's going to set you up for success in the future. Hey, you could be larger than life, bigger than the world, living out the hopes and dreams of every boy and every girl. Hey, you could fly higher than the sky, shine brighter than the stars, you can live for you ever wanted. Larger than life is what we've made Oklahoma City with a spirit that says, go for it. You can have for you ever wanted, you know you could. institutions of higher learning in Oklahoma. We are teaching tomorrow's leaders. We are champions. We're the first forensic science program of its kind in the state. We are making school rock. We are the leaders on campus today and in our communities tomorrow. We are reaching new heights in the fine arts. We are tomorrow's business innovators. We are learning to prevent illness and promote health in our community. We are all this and more. We are Central. You Central weather. We're going to take a look right now at your seven day forecast. Tonight at 71 degrees. Wednesday, we're going to jump back up into 91. Thursday, 89. Friday at 80. And as you see in uh, this coming weekend, this coming weekend, well, we have a little bit chance of some rain coming in, about 40% chance of rain. You can see um, Saturday at 86, Sunday at 86, but hey, the lower temperatures there going into 68 on Thursday, 71 um, on Friday. And so as we get into the night temperatures, they drop significantly lower than the daytime temperatures. And hey, that's a good thing, right? Yeah. It's a really great thing. I definitely think it's starting to get cooler. It's going to be... Mm -hmm. around the last couple weeks of hot and then now it's going to start mm -hmm. getting a little bit yeah, cooler. This is yeah, probably the last week with the 90s. And yeah, next week turns into fall week, so mm -hmm. hopefully we get some cooler temperatures Can't and people wait. can go out and, and yes. uh, really do a lot more things. That's yeah. amazing. Well, thank you for tuning in to this edition of Youth Central News. Make sure to add us on Twitter, Youth Central Media, and on Facebook at Youth Central. Have a great night, Edmund.